My background in this particular field comes from about 20 years of working in interdisciplinary fields, but engineering, technical communication, scientific communication. I've seen it from both sides of the aisle, if you will, both on the technical, scientific side, and also from the liberal arts point of view. For those who are in the academic fields with engineering attached to them, it's really quite important for them to understand, again, the big picture. Where does their work fit inside that larger body of knowledge? How are they contributing to the field? And again, none of those points work in the outside world or even within academia unless you're a very good writer and a very good presenter. And so while these very intricate pieces of research are getting done, they have to be communicated to the outside world. Otherwise, it dies right there in the lab. For an engineer to be successful, I think all kinds of things have to be in place. One of it has to be certainly technical skills, having the ability to do work well. You have to be able to work inside an organization, and that means whether it's an academic organization or a company, an organization, a government agency, whatever that might be. You have to have people skills. You have to be able to maneuver inside those organizations. You have to be able to communicate your information to all different levels of people, whether it's the general public, whether it's a dissertation advisor, whether it's your manager, the owner of a company. So you have to be able to be pretty agile in communicating your technical information no matter where you sit. So you have to work with your colleagues down the hall. You might have to be testifying in front of a government agency at some point. So you have to be able to see who your audience is, assess who that is very clearly, and be able to talk to them in a way that's appropriate for their knowledge base as well. For any student that is thinking even early on, junior high, high school, about starting up in engineering, certainly you have to be very strong in the STEM skills. But also don't neglect those other talents that you're going to need to nurture. This is learning how to write. It's learning how to present. And that can come in all sorts of different ways. I've had many students who pursue music, so marching band, for example. They pursue theater because that is a very good way to put yourself in front of other people, know how to be elegant, agile, know how to use your voice and your body in a particular way to get an effect done. So don't neglect what people call the liberal arts uh, along the way, because those are important. I get to work with the smartest people on campus. The students that I work with every single day, they're the ones with the fresh ideas, with the good, raw energy. They want to get out there and they want to make a difference in all kinds of different ways. I have the privilege of working with them every single day, and that's actually the best part of my job. I can't think of a better place on campus to um, be at a, at a turning point where students are seeing the way that their work can be applied for good in the world. In 2014, I had a book come out called Slide Rules. It was co-authored with Christine Nicometo. And this is the culmination of a lot of work that we put in over the years with both students and practitioners of engineering. We wrote the book because there was nothing out there that addressed the specific needs for technical, scientific, and engineering presentations. There's a lot of books out there on how to do presentations for something that's more marketing or business oriented. Nothing quite fit for the kinds of intricate work that engineers have to do day to day. So in that book, you'll find some really great color examples, lots of very detailed examples of how to use three basic techniques to change up your presentation style. We encourage the use of sentence headers, of really great targeted visuals, and then also for those who are working inside organizations to use the notes as a way to beef up those slides and they become a, a more of an archival or legacy item inside your organizations in that way. So the book really addresses both academic work and work that's on site inside these organizations as well.